<laughs> hey, gang. <laughs> oh, my. I accidentally hit my face so you can know. Hi, I'm Dan. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. I guess a little, little extra in broadcasting, I mean. <laughs> and uh, it's real s- simple and irritating um, technical problems again. My Mevo camera died. Let me show you what I've done most of my broadcasting on for the past year. This nifty little thing called Mevo, M E V O. And uh, it has its challenges and problems. But tragically, the week before last, while I was in Ocracoke, um, this camera died. And I've been, uh, I haven't gone ahead and bought another one because that's another 300 bucks. And uh, I'm running out of money. <laughs> I just spent $650 on a good microphone that I'm not using right now. Anyway, let me take a minute and uh, close my office door while you just happily stare at that table and tell you what I'm going to do today. I uh, went out this morning to do some um, watercolor, a realistic watercolor, which you see right here. Here's the photograph and here's the painting half done. Let me show you a little bit what I've done real quickly, hopefully not to to confuse you, but I've really enjoyed doing, these are copies, but I, they're actual size. I've really enjoyed doing little watercolor sketches. And I use that term very intentionally. I don't call them watercolors because there's too many tricks. Watercolor pencil, basically, and pen and ink, and opaque white, even opaque blue sometimes, like here in the sky. But those were really fun. And I'll let you watch me do some of those later. I was sorry that I wasn't able to broadcast during that. Okay, so here I was doing a watercolor, a fairly realistic watercolor rendering of this scene. And I was just going to start broadcasting. And I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. This, this is a good opportunity. The question comes up. The question does come up. So what are, what are good mediums? And by the way, in the art world, uh, you, you English majors, let me turn you around for a minute. <laughs> you, uh, you English majors, I'll turn you around again. You English majors need to back off and cut us some slack here. I know the plural of medium is media. Multimedia. Media conglomerates. Mainstream media, right? That's plural. But in the art world... I'm going to beg, I'm going to beg for an exception to the rule. And uh, those of you who are anthropological linguists, you'll go along with this. Those of you who are stuck in the mud English majors, you won't go along with this. Because you guys think we can never break the rules. Well, I think broke, rules are broken two ways, by dumb people and smart people. Dumb people break change language by not knowing the rules and, and by default changing the language because they don't know what the rules are. Then there's smart people who make, like, I think me. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Who make up words on purpose. Anyway, I'm going to go. So, mediums. One of the best mediums. And, and uh, I'm going to give you a little tour. Just for fun. There's my blank canvas. And, and talk about doing realism in many different media. Mediums. <laughs> and I'm going to start... I'm going to start at the far end of the spectrum. That is a medium that you would not normally think. You would not normally think of being used for realism. Fair enough? So I'm going to start with pen and ink. I'm going to start with some really crazy examples of realism. Now, (laughs) this will be fun. I did this drawing and a number of others. I did this drawing in about 1996 or 7, near the end of my illustration career. These are all the same thing. You can see it's actually got wrinkled. Now what you're looking at here is, and I'm going to zoom in just as far as I can. What you're looking at here is actual hand-drawn in other words, no computer involved. <laughs> that's that's almost too far in, isn't it? I'm going to back up now. No computer involved. 
in any of this drawing. In fact, hang on a second. I'll pick you up off this stand and just do it this way. Okay, so again, I look at the oven and go, doggone, are you serious? So all of this was drawn with a rapidograph pen. Those of you who don't know what a rapidograph pen is, it's one of those, okay? All of this was drawn with a rapidograph pen and templates, plastic, little, I still have them over here, a bunch of them. Well, here's, here's one. There's a template, actually pronounced template, but template is how it's spelled. <laughs> so uh, there we go, an ellipse guide. So I have stacks and stacks and stacks of these, literally, probably 40 or 50, nah, 30 or 40 uh, ellipse guides, and then a whole bunch of other templates as well, plus compasses. Some of you guys hardly, probably even don't even know what a compass is, hardly do you? Let me look at my compass. I didn't know I was going to get into all this. Ah. Oh, here it is. This is in the bottom drawer. There we go. Okay. High quality, high quality German made Schlagel Schleiermacher. <laughs> I don't know. I'm making that up. <laughs> but, you know, one of those German names. <laughs> so, you know, it's high quality. Anyway, um, I just show you this because I want to start at the outer fringes of realism. Again, uh, I mean, I look at this stuff and think, this is nuts. It's drawn on vellum so that I would actually draw with a, with a rapidograph pen and then scratch out with an X-Acto knife. So this was actually drawn almost two-thirds with a pen, one-third with an X-Acto knife, where I would scratch, 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 scratch to, uh, to clean up the lines. Anyway, so um, there's a stack of very... Strange. Most of you wouldn't think of pen and ink realism, but I'm I'm putting quotes in a sense around that. It's realism of sorts, and uh, I will I will explain maybe. And then I finished these, by the way, in airbrush. Wow. Let me put those aside and pick up another, still in pen and ink, just for fun. And again, most of you wouldn't think of inking this. But here's another example of very, very fine and detailed realism of sorts. Realism of sorts. It's a stylized realism, of course, right? Whoa, is that enough detail for you? So here again, every single, every single brick is drawn, every board, even the grain in the wood, every brick, every shingle rendered this. I did a lot of this kind of work about 10, 11, 12 years ago. Uh, so, actually, after I got back into illustration. So, again, there you go. Realism, quote, unquote, realism of sorts. And, uh, again, these were done for an architectural rendering company. Let's stay in pen and ink for just a couple more minutes because, and I again, I'm starting at the outer fringes of what I would call realism, but it's worth taking a look at. Ooh, bad glare. Let's see if I can fix that real, real quick. There we go. Not so bad. Um, so this is a medium that uh, I invented. I'm not sure if that's the word that I developed, that I used. Uh, and again, this goes back about 20 years or more. This is pen and ink and airbrush. So uh, you can, again, trying to zoom in that my wife was the model for that woman, and I have no idea who the man here was. But you can see the, the cross hatching, real tiny, tiny, tiny cross hatching with colored ink, not black ink. That would be too stark, but brown ink mostly. And uh, again, rapidograph pen on vellum or mylar. I don't, oh yeah, see, I did. I did paint a little bit on the back. Can you see that? Let me back up so you can... There you go. So I only did white airbrush on the back, and I did all the colored airbrush on the front. So again, just for fun to show you, can you do realism with pen and ink? And of course, the answer, you'd have to, again, you have to put the realism in quotation marks, if you know what I mean, because it's not photorealism. Why? Because, why? See? because it's got little lines in it. <laughs> so there's no way that could be called realism. But again, realism sort of in quotation marks. Now, since I've gone that far, let's go just one step further in the pen and ink realm. And of course, part of what I'm doing here, yes, of course, is showing off. <laughs> but 
Now let's see if we can get this. This is the last pen and ink realism that I'm going to show you. Whoa. Wow. I think this will work better if I pick it off and pick up my camera again. Okay. So again, we're getting all kinds of glare. This, this illustration actually hangs in my studio downstairs. And this was done. There we go. So again, ignore the bad glare over here. This illustration was done, started in 1989 or 90. No, started in 88, finished in 89. And again, this is the kind of stuff I used to do in when I was an illustrator. Pen and ink and airbrush. So I would call that, it's not photorealism, but it's some kind of realism. More than most people would associate with uh, pen and ink. And it's, a, again, a tiny bit of airbrush in there. Not much. Mostly pen and ink, just a little bit of airbrush. So there we go. That is oddball realism category number one, pen and ink. <laughs> okay. Now, before we go on to something a little more serious, let me throw a couple more oddballs at you just for fun. I really want to mention this. When it comes to realism, some of you may have seen me do this illustration again. Sorry about the bad glare. I'll pick it up again. This is a caricature of myself. So it's not realistic like it's realistic. <laughs> but the, the, shadow, the shadowing, the shading, the color is fairly realistic. And uh, this is an illustration that I did about a year ago and I broadcast it. In fact, you could find a whole playlist on my YouTube channel called... Uh, illustrations in the style of C.F. Payne or Chris Payne. And that's what I did that with. Now, that's, again, that's a funny one. Uh, let me get, give you the list real quickly of how this is done. It's colored pencil covered up by translucent acrylic covered up by watercolor then dabbed out, then covered up by oil painting and erased out and then finished with colored pencil and oil or acrylic paints. So I don't know if you got those six layers. Fascinating. I'm absolutely fascinated by CF Payne's technique. Here's uh, one more oddball thing before before we go on to more traditional stuff. Um, just, just bears a special honorable mention, <laughs> perhaps. Now, back about 14 years ago, I went through a season where I really enjoyed playing with uh, oil pastel. And this is an oil pastel drawing. And the reason I pointed it out is because nobody in their right mind <laughs> tries to do oil pastel, tries to do realism in oil pastel. In fact, the people who do, do oil pastel are almost always sort of wild and crazy abstract expressionists and they're doing wild, wild, wild stuff. And because that oil pastel gives itself to that kind of stuff, it does. It's not given to realism. But this is one experiment, and um, I'll just say, okay, the bricks, you know, done by scratching out. The trees back here are fairly realistic. Again, for oil pastel, and I'm just mentioning this as an oddball thing, just for fun. I had one more here. Um, again, the trees here, you know, pretty realistic. Again. For oil pastel. Okay, that's enough of that. Enough of the crazy stuff. Now, let's talk about realism. And uh, I have th basically four mediums left. I'm counting. They are oil painting, watercolor, airbrush, and charcoal or pencil. Let's start with, again, the least realistic of those. That would be charcoal or pencil. This happens to be a charcoal um, portrait. Oh, I'm sorry. This is very strange the way that does that. Um, I did this back years ago, 10 years ago, maybe when I was thinking about getting into wedding stuff. And I wondered if any brides would want their portrait done as a real portrait. And so far, none of them have. <laughs> So <laughs> I just have this. It was a promotional piece that I put together. Um, but again, some of you need to see that realism can be done. And you could get even more realistic than this with charcoal. I have here an illustration that is not, again, you'd have to put realism in 
quotes. It's realistic effects. Um, it's it's playing around with realism without falling, you know, without really, really trying to do super realism. I'll pick you up again for this one. Sorry for all the bumping and jumping and for the bad glare. There we go. So there's a jar of coins. I'm pretty happy with these work gloves. I mean, I would call that realistic, wouldn't you? Even the texture there looks fairly believable. And then outside the the uh, door is a landscape old-fashioned. And by the way, there's a dollar sign hidden in the landscape there. See it? Kind of at an angle like that. Whoops. Can you see that? The letter S? Would, anyway. So, again, just sort of bear sp special mention because most people wouldn't think of realism when it comes to charcoal. But I want to show you that it can be done. And I've done several demos over the months. Hang on, I'll do another one someday. I like the glass here. That's pretty pretty realistic. And uh, so there we go. So I'm done with all the, the oddball stuff. <laughs> now, that, now let's sink our teeth into some real realism. Okay, I have one sample of airbrush. And I, I, I'm really sorry about that because I've done several